Greetings fellow engineering wizards. Thanks for joining me in part 1 of this race engine build video series. I hope you enjoy it. Before the build commences, all components have been thoroughly cleaned, weighed, weight matched, measured and all running clearances calculated and adjusted. Here I'm matching the heaviest wrist pins with the lightest pistons. All the critical dimensions are recorded on an engine build sheet, as they will be required later in order to calculate bearing and piston to wall running clearances. Before I go any further, I should confess to a crime. This is not my real voice. I have run my own voice through a trout and iguana based voice synthesizer. This is the result. Anyway, back to the task in hand. To get the correct cylinder liner protrusion amount, it was necessary to machine the deck surface by 0.05 mm. Although it's definitely not the ideal tool, I chose to use the CNC for this, because I was too lazy to take it to the machine shop. Prior to completing this operation the liner protrusion was at zero, which would have caused the head gasket to fail almost immediately. We are now at 0.07 mm, which is right in the middle of the minimum and maximum permitted values. Excellent. Or as the magical trout of Paraguay would say, a blind man would be glad to see it. Next up we're installing the main bearing shells. I have previously measured the clearances with a dial bore gauge and found him to be towards the upper end of the specification. A little extra oil clearance is a good thing in a race engine. Now we drop the crank down into the block and apply a very thin smear of sealant onto the machine faces. A drop of oil on the bolt threads help them to reach their correct torque setting. Then the bolts are tightened a further 45 degrees. A paint pen is used to ensure we don't lose track of which bolts we've torqued. Easily done if you suddenly find you have been distracted by a distant noise, such as of the postman getting attacked by your pet aardvark or other such nonsense.
Ah yes excellent. The crankshaft turns nice and freely. Just what we want. Here I'm checking the thrust clearance. Again, within specification for this engine at 0.15 mm. The front crank oil seal is going in now. and the bottom cam belt pulley. Now the rear main seal goes in. The world's largest socket is used to help tap the seal home. Some shiny new cylinder liners are to be used. Again these were measured using a dial ball gauge and found to be within 0.01 mm in taper and out of round. These are the liner seals going on here. I made this simple fixture to measure the big end weights. Out of the box these Wasner conrods were balanced to within one hundredth of a gram. Very impressive. For the big ends I'm using King, coated race bearings. I like to clean the coating off the back using Scotch-Brite, otherwise it tends to scrape off as you install it into the conrod, preventing the bearing seating properly. After this, I clean them with acetone to ensure they are perfectly clean. Here you can see the Seabass engineering conrod vise coming into play. This tool helps hold the rods while you torque up the bolts and measure the vertical bearing clearance with a dial ball gauge.
These are ARPL-19 Conrod bolts. The relaxed length is calibrated using a Seabass Engineering CNC stretch gauge. After torquing the bolts to the recommended setting, the stretch is verified using the gauge. Now we're measuring the piston ring end gap. For my application these are gapped to specification right out of the packet. No need to file them. Now the piston rings are installed onto the pistons. As the bore is smaller than the width of the conrods, I chose to install the pistons into the liners, and then install the conrod onto the piston afterwards. A little bit strange, but it worked. A bit like my life. I used a tapered ring compressor to install the pistons into the liners, and then remove the liner from the block for the connecting rod to be installed on the bench. Now the conrod is installed. The Sikun snap ring is installed to secure the wrist pin. Finally, the pistons and liner assemblies can be installed into the block and secured with some M10 bolts and large washes.
These bolts and washes are simply to prevent them from falling onto the ground as the engine is rotated on the stand. The piston and liner assembly falling onto the ground look is not currently fashionable. Or so I am told. The big ends are now torqued to specification and the obligatory test rotation is performed. As you can see the engine turns. This is good news, as if the engine did not turn over the only real option at this stage is to set it on fire and walk away, resulting in much alarm and distress. Finally the oil pump and sump is installed. <laughs> 